So right now the GTA is sitting at 2.6 months of inventory. So anything from zero to three is seller's market, three to four is balance, and anything over four is buyer's market. Hi everyone, and welcome to Reality Check, where we discuss what's happening in Toronto's real estate market, where it's going, and help you make informed decision buying or selling real estate. My name is Nima. I'm here with Devani. Hi everyone. Devani's got a little bit of a stiff neck going on. <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be all fine. Bear with us. And before we start, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and share with anyone you think they're gonna find it useful. So today, yes. we're gonna start with the market watch. What's happening in uh, GTA overall, in terms of active listing prices, months of inventory, and just take an overall look at how the market performed yeah. in September. So in terms of uh, active listings, uh, the number of active listings in September and August were almost similar. I mean, in September, as we can see, we had uh, 13,500. In August was 13,300. So not much of a change, but in terms of sales, we had much lower sales. And again, that was due to the fact that we had the rate increase. Yeah. I mean. If you uh, recall, at the beginning of the month, we had the long weekend, and then right after it, we had uh, the rate increase. And any time any rate increase happens, there's, a, I would say, about like a week, 10 An days. An adjustment period. People are kind of digesting yeah. it a little bit before uh, things start happening again. Yeah, they don't want to, like, usually, we see it in our own clients as well. People don't want to jump the gun and, like, you know, make a purchase and see, oh, the next sell was lower. So there's a little bit of a confusion. But again, ending the month, I think the month was going pretty strong towards the end. We saw a lot of properties all over GTA, from York Region, downtown, and even West End with multiple offers, which, which we'll, we'll discuss, discuss later, later on. So um, It felt a little bit like a normal fall market beginning, exactly. which was nice. So in terms of average price, we're sitting at a million eighty-six seven hundred, which is a pretty strong number compared to last month. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about the average prices, but we know... We're having a little bit of an upward trend. And would you say that we've hit the bottom because of it? I would say so, yeah, because for the last three months, yeah. we've been plateauing and it's been coming up. I mean, I think July was the lowest average sale, and since then we've been slowly going up. Okay. It would be interesting to see what happens in September because I think that will indicate, you know, where we're heading. You mean October, yeah. In October, yeah. yeah. So another thing to mention also is the uh, days on the market. So the days on the market mm -hmm. is increasing. That means uh, it takes longer for properties to sell. Take into consideration that uh, this number also takes condos. Everything into everything. consideration. It's in so it's consideration. the GTA as a whole, yeah. different areas as well. Yeah, and condos tend to be sitting on the market much longer than detached right now. So going into the uh, average prices. So the average price in Tron, uh, Toronto right now is sitting at million. 86,000. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to this graph that we always talk about it. I mean, the craziness happened in February. We have the peak. We have five months of declining, declining average prices. And we hit July. That's the bottom right here. And then we have August going up further up. And right now, September. So three months of consecutive increase in prices. What do you think that happened? I think there's a few reasons, but for me, the, the fundamental is that we have a supply issue. It always has been, and I think it's ever so more now that, you know, there's not enough inventory. We're trying to keep up. We can't build fast enough. Um, we have a supply issue. And I also think that, you know, the interest rates, yes, they keep happening. Um, and I think people are anticipating that they are going to keep happening, and they're getting a lot more comfortable with that whole idea. Um, so people feel more confident to make the moves. And the fact that a lot of properties that weren't selling was taken off the market. So that's why we didn't see that much of a growth in active listing because it was growing till around August, but it came down. And right now for the last two months, yeah. it's been almost the same. So we don't see that much inventory that would really put downward pressure on the prices. It's important to look at all of the numbers. You know, we, we really segmented off and we talk about prices, months of inventory, um, you know, all of that. And it, it only is important if you can put them side by side and see that active listings is important to know, but also what is selling and what is that correlation. And so we will talk a little bit about absorption when we hit the months of inventory yeah. segment, um, because I think it's it's something that people should understand. Don't and these, just, are the, these are good points to know when yeah. you're in the market, whether selling 
or buying because that will determine what you should be asking or what you, what you should be offering. Yeah, and oftentimes what I hear a lot from clients is, oh, but Devani, the prices are down, the prices are down. And that is true. I'm not saying that it's not true, but you have to factor everything as a whole in order to make that proper decision. True. So just don't be focused on one category. Take it all. Yeah. So just to point that out. Yeah. So average prices year over year is down by 4%. Yeah. But if you go in different pockets, you will see different behaviors. Some pockets could be down 10%, whereas there are pockets in Toronto that the prices are actually higher than this time last year. Yeah. So you can't really just take the whole thing. And be careful because when we compare year to date or you know uh, month over month, those are two very different numbers you're gonna get. So the condos in Toronto are sitting at $769,000. Like I wanna bring this in, put this in perspective. Yeah. At the peak, uh, which for condo market was in March, the condos in Toronto were sitting at an average of $831,000. So you know, it's roughly about $60,000 drop in the prices in Toronto, mm -hmm. York region, right now is sitting at $695,000 for an average condo. And at the peak, which was again in March, prices were seen sitting at $760,000. So again, roughly $65,000 price drop there too. So Condos I, are not as active as detached these days. Yeah. So, so when an inventory starts to contract, different things start to happen. So while we're talking about the condos, yeah. so the condo sales are actually down 50% compared to last year. I mean, last year, People were just starting to go and buy condos, you know, mm -hmm. after COVID slowed down. And I would say it wasn't even a craziness in the market. But right now, it's even slower than what it was last year. And this is why, you know, you see some of the active listings uh, growing, mm -hmm. why the days on the market are growing, because yeah. it's mostly in the condo segment. So the detached prices, let's talk about what's happening in Toronto. Toronto mm -hmm. detached price is sitting at $1,586,000. York region is sitting at $1,311,000. Let's talk about what the peak was though. At the peak of it, in February, the detached prices in New York was at $1,728,000. That's over $400,000 drop. And this is where the opportunities are. I mean, yeah. um, let's not talk about you know crazy prices over a million, even below a million in Barrie, for example, a property that a client of ours just purchased uh, comparable was sitting at $890,000 back in March. Mm -hmm. We purchased it for $650,000. And this property has been on the market for a long time. So, you know, someone is motivated to sell. If there's a buyer out there, they can get a, gra a great deal. Yeah. So months of inventory. This is where we actually... How can... we gauge the market. Yeah, exactly. How we gauge the market, whether we're selling or buying, we should know what the months of inventory in that pocket or in that market is. Mm -hmm. So Dev, what's months of inventory? So months of inventory is if no other home were to come on the market, how long it would take to sell the Ex standing inventory. Exactly. So, and that's really cru crucial because- um, It dictates whether we're in a seller's market or a buyer's market, yeah, so, which right now we're what, at 2.69 or 3.69? So right now we're at 2.69 uh, and we were at 2.39, so anything below, is seller's market, three mm -hmm. to four is natural. And then uh, after four, we're gonna be in uh, buyer's market. So right now the GTA is sitting at 2.6 months of inventory. So mm -hmm. uh, as we've discussed before, anything from zero to three is seller's market, three to four is balanced, and anything over four is buyer's market. And majority of the areas in Toronto are right now in seller's market, except Toronto proper, which mm -hmm. is just over three, months of inventory, 3.15 months of inventory. And again, you gotta take that with a grain of salt because this number takes into consideration all categories of homes, condos all the way to mm -hmm. detached. And condos right now, there's a, I would say a lot of standing inventory. Which this is where you make money, guys. This is where you get in and you pick something up, you put a tenant in and you hold. Yeah with rents going up, so it makes a lot of sense. You're grabbing these condos at a discount. This is the time. So as Nima said, we really hit the bottom. The time is really shortened. Yeah. So there still is, like in the condo market specifically, right? Exactly. There still is a lot of deals to be had, but I think the time is gonna be up soon. And that's, that's my point. You cannot time the market, right? If right now you knew July was gonna be the bottom, you know, you're like, oh, You would I have probably it. moved. Yeah. And right now, I think we're still, going to be plateauing up and down. There's good mm -hmm. amount of inventory out there and there are deals out there. There are people that are actually 
uh, motivated to sell. So you gotta be out there and look for these deals to find out. I'll give you an example. We had a client recently uh, that wanted to buy a property in Barrie. We purchased a property that was sitting on the market for a few months, uh, multiple price drops, and it was listed at $700,000, and we got that property at $650,000. Mm -hmm. That's a detached property in Barrie, renovated. Same property back in March, mm -hmm. with not as many upgrades, sold for $890,000. That's called 900000 I mean, you're from 900000 you're down at 650000 and that property right now, can be rented for $3,000 a month. So if someone's looking for that cash flow, these are the opportunities. Don't be so fixated about, let's say, buying downtown core, buy here, buy there. You gotta see what's important to you. You gotta be flexible because yeah. keep in mind, when people are for sale in this market, they are serious. I'm from a belief system where, you know, no one's testing the market. Oh, let's see what I can get. We're also very consumer based. People yeah. like to get new things. You know, it's fast, 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 and people will find a way to make something happen. They just will. Exactly. And again, we're talking about months inventory as a whole. So if someone is going, looking at condos downtown, the realtor should grab the months of inventory for that condos in downtown. Area, yeah. That is specific area. So you know how many active listings there are and how many of them are selling. Then you okay. know what kind of deals you can get. So let's just talk about Brampton. I mean, we had an yeah. interesting case in Brampton. Uh, Detached property was uh, listed, you know, in the 700 range, 52 offers. Which means there's still 51 people still shopping. Yeah. Right? And, uh, so it ended if you up wanted to sell 900. in that area. Yeah. That means like you'd from probably the price get... point of 700 to 900,000, there's about 51 other people looking to purchase. So this is why the months of inventory in Brampton right now is sitting at, you know, just over two months of inventory, right? Same thing in Durham region. It's below two. We're at... Two rooms at 1.69 months of inventory. So you can expect to go there and be like, listen, you know what? I'm going to buy a bungalow that was a million dollars at 600. It's not happening, right? If you're looking for deals, you got to see where you can get the deals. Overall, what's happening with the months of inventory? I want to talk about the fact that, you know, in May, we had a spike in the months of inventory. We went over three months. And right now we're hovering between two to three months of inventory. What's going to happen in the coming months? I suspect that with the interest rate increase, October and November, I don't think we're going to you know, cross into the three months, but uh, it all depends what the next interest rate hike is going to be. If, again, we're going to talk about 0 0.5, 0 0.75, we could go in a balanced market again. Yeah. Um, if it's anywhere from 0.25 or let's just say they don't increase the rates, I would say the market is going to... Um, Keep going up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Keep going up a little bit and the months of inventory is going to decline slightly. So I do want to talk a little bit about absorption rate, which is not a topic we hit too, too much, but I think it's worth mentioning, right? So yeah. what is absorption rate, you may ask? It's the rate at which things are trading or selling, I should say, actually. And so right now we are selling at 40%, which means 40% of active listings are selling. So 60% are not. That also means you got to be the best home on the market if you really do want to sell. You got to be priced right, as Nima always says, and you got to look the best, right? Two very, very important things to remember, but you want to know where the deals are. It's that 60% that is not. So when you see those pictures that don't look the best, go see it with your realtor. Yeah, that's where you can find the deals, and that's where the money is lying. And, yeah. you know, if you are selling your home, these are the points that you got to follow and also anticipate what's coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. For example, if yes. you know there is a rate hike coming, you shouldn't be chasing, you know, prices back, let's say in, in February. February and, you know, try and price high. No, you got to anticipate the fact that there is going to be a rate hike. So you got to be priced properly with the with that in mind that there could be a little bit of a price drop. So when you price it right, that's when you get the multiple offers and we are seeing right now, mm. multiple offers happening for properties that are actually priced correctly. Question round. So <laughs> we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the questions we always get. And one of them, the biggest one I always get and about you is, why aren't prices lower? And I'm like, okay, well, prices have come down about 400K in you know, the detached since February. So how much more money do you need to save in order to you know, jump in? And even for the listings, I always get this. It's like, oh, but in February, I could have got you know, so-and-so. Number one, we're not in February anymore, I hate to tell you. And B, like no one ever lost, you know, money making a profit. You're still ahead. You're still based ahead. Based on like 
the last two years. I mean, so like, I guess it depends when you bought two, right? And how much you purchased for. But you got to factor that in. You can't just be like, oh, February this. You got to take it as a whole. That's a whole thing. So if someone bought in February, like if you're flipping, yeah, you know, it's not a good market for it. But no. if you, we're talking about people who actually need places to live. So we're talking about like, obviously, like residential, but like primary residential, yeah. not yeah. investments at this point. And even if right now you're selling, let's assume you bought in 2019. Right now, since 2019, the average price is up just over 30%. So over the last three years, every year consecutively, you've made 10%. I mean, this is how the market is. I mean, over the 25-year average sits at about 8% mm -hmm. return. So if you're at 10%, you're well above the market. I mean, let's just forget about the fact that February Big happened. Picture. Yeah, you're still ahead. If you need to sell, you're selling and you're buying in the same market. So you're still getting a good deal. Mm -hmm. And if you, I love that. If you're cashing out, let's say someone is leaving the country, someone wants to you know, completely cash out and go rent, well, still you're ahead. So let's not get too bogged down with what happened in February because if you want that to happen, then you got to sit down for another two to three years till the market gets back to where it was. So in the news, recently there's been a lot of talks about how the prices are going to be falling another 25%. And Which last, we talked about last time. Yeah, last time we talked about it and we saw, you know, the headline didn't really tell the true story. They were talking about how in 2023, let's say February, there's going to be a 25% price uh, drop. But yeah, compared to the February of 2022, when the prices were crazy, right now we're already down uh, on average about 20 to 22%. So another 3% is not going to do much. Today, uh, I saw another article that uh, TD again came out with and says, TD expects steeper home price drop in early 2023. Again, going through the article, it's essentially someone just forecasting that the uh, average national home prices for the entire Canada, we're not talking about GTA, oh, wow. the entire Canada is going to drop 11.2% in 2023. We know like 2022, the first quarter was nuts. So if this person comes and says, you know, the prices are going to drop by 11% uh, in 2023 overall, this is something that's already it's happened. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing new happening. It's like 1% a month. It's yeah. really not that significant. And we've already seen that drop happening. So these are just headlines to grab uh, attention, uh, clickbaits, essentially. Mm -hmm. something that and was, the key words, too, are really important, right? Like yeah. you said, nationally. Yeah, so not a lot of people look at that and they think, no, it's, they're talking about GTA. No, it's across Canada. I mean, like a lot of areas, Calgary, Edmonton, no, these yeah. areas are you know totally behaving different than how GTA behaves because of the whole economy there being dependent on oil. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other thing that was in the news that yeah. was interesting was Doc Ford talking about how he's going to increase um, homes. Um, he had a crazy projection of about uh, 1.5 million new homes. I don't know how over, he's going to build that fast, but Over the next for 10 him. years. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, again, we've had articles like this. I mean, okay, yeah, it's easy to say, okay, we're going to build you know, 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years. But first of all, who's going to build that? Yeah. Who's going to deal with the rising cost of construction? Because if you're building more homes, you're going to need more material. Right now, you can't even find anything. So how are you going to build affordable homes when the supply of raw material is limited? Yeah. The other thing that was really interesting in the article was that he is talking about waiving development charges for uh, for all new homes. So which is great news. Which is amazing because that's a huge cost. We're talking about the average, develop, not average, the range for development charges are in the low $20,000 and it goes as high as just over $90,000. And this was something that we, we were really not happy about this year because they were increasing them quite significantly. Exactly. And that caused, you know, pre-construction stir. Yeah. And right now we see that in pre-construction, there are good, good opportunities and talking about development charges, there are developers that are waiving the development charges. I mean, they're absorbing it. They're, you know, the they're going to be paying yeah. it on behalf of the client. So as an example, we have uh, craft condos in the junction area. Mm -hmm. So zero closing costs. So you're not paying for any development charges, any metering fee, nothing. The only thing you're going to be paying is your land transfer tax. And people like that because I've noticed in pre-construction, they want to know what's the number. I don't want any hidden fees. I don't want yeah. any question marks. I want to know, you know, in 2028, what's the number going to be? Exactly. And that is 
uh, really good incentive because on the closing, you're going to come up probably with additional 5 to 10% mm -hmm. to put down for your mortgage. And you know, on top of that, coming up with another $20,000 for development charges could be a little bit tough. So this is going to be a good help. So if someone is looking to invest and they don't want to buy a resale, pre-construction could be a good route to go. You put down the deposit and you close on it three years down the road. Guys, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, be sure to send it to us. We'll address it on the next reality check. And if you find this all useful, guys, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and reshare it with your friends. Thank you.